Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we are looking at this. This is Logitech's new G910 keyboard using the Romer G switches, which it's a brand new switch type. It's not Cherry, it's not Kale, it's called Romer G. It is built by Logitech and they built it for endurance. So the big difference here is the switch type, which we'll get to in a second. Going over the features, this is a 180-ish dollar keyboard. It's fully RGB enabled, meaning it's got uh, all the red, green, blue LEDs. You can do tons of color combinations, not quite sure how many, but it's a lot more than you can care about. And it uses a full color palette swatch type thing that you'd find in Photoshop uh, in Logitech software to change the colors. You can individually change the color of keys. So if you want WASD to be different or if you want your MOBA keys to be different, you can save a profile for that and then it'll highlight those based on whatever you set in the settings. You can also do all kinds of breathing effects and things like that if you like the aesthetics. There's a lot more to it than that though. You can program the RGB switches so that in theory, once game developers support this, you could actually have a cooldown uh, mapping on one of your keys. So if you wanted E to be red when your ability is, is depleted and you want it to glow or breathe green when it's ready for use, you could actually program that into this. And uh, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. So if someone else has done it, you can grab it online, of course, on a forum and download the profile. So that's pretty cool. It's not really implemented yet. Don't go out buying it expecting that right now, but it's something we'll keep an eye on and as soon as I see it available, I'll do a video on how to, how to implement that and how to program these. The keyboard has a full media panel on it. It's got play, stop, pause, skip, back, which is pretty awesome for gaming because I like to listen to music sometimes when I game, but when I'm the last person on the CSGO team or whatever, I want to pause that music so I can hear everything and make sure I know where the footsteps are. That's sort of what this is useful for. It also has a volume wheel. You can just scroll up and down if you want to change the volume, and it's got mute if you want to mute everything, and that's been around for a while now on keyboards. I'm a big fan of it. it I know some people aren't, but I like it, and it's there if you need it. Uh, it does not have the USB ports that the G710 Plus had, and it, the G710 Plus took two USB slots because it would power those USB ports, and this doesn't have it, which I really wish it did have one because now it makes sense. Now Logitech has added this, uh, they call Arcs Dock. Let me see if I can, so I pop that up right there. That is a phone dock, it's a cold dock, and all it does is hold your phone, which it's uh, why, right? <laughs> why? Um, so it would it would be cool if I could power the phone if it were a hot foot or a hot shoe that I could just plug the phone into or had a micro USB coming out of here into the board because then at least you can charge your phone while you're using Logitech's application. They have a mobile app that will show you things like uh, your system resource usage and things like that and it sort of replaces the LCD that was found on the G15 keyboard. So that's where they've gone with the LCD. They basically say, put your phone in it, it's cheaper for all of us. And that's true, but it all you're doing is killing your battery unless you charge the phone with another cable going up to your desk. So I'd really like to see that expanded on in future iterations so that it makes more sense. Aside from that, of course, the big news is the Romer G switch. I've talked about this with Logitech before. We've got a video on the channel discussing the Romer G switches. Switch types are a big deal with keyboards because that's what creates the mechanical feeling. That's why it doesn't feel like a membrane keyboard that a lot of people hate now after being spoiled by mechanical. So with switches, we have Kale, we have Cherry, uh, we have Topher, stuff like that, and then we've got uh, now Romer G, and there are plenty of other ones in between too, but those are the big ones, Kale and Cherry especially. Cherry is sort of the premier brand. They are manufactured in Germany. They have switch shortages all the time. That's why we have trouble finding MX Green, and they're used in really everything. Cooler Master, Logitech uses them. Their G710 Plus, which is similar to this in concept, uh, uses the MX Brown switches that are rubber damped. And that rubber damper, it's basically just an O-ring on the bottom of the switch. So when you push it down, it doesn't make as loud of a clack. And this is about the same sound and feeling as a rubber damped MX Brown switch. So it doesn't have the loud, clicky, clacky responsiveness that MX Blues have, but it's also less fatiguing. It's quieter for people who want quieter keyboards. And that's sometimes a thing that's desirable. You don't always want the loudest keyboard in the room. At least I don't. Uh, and I know a lot of you do, but that's the great thing about switches because we have lots of choices out there. So with the Romer G switches, they're theoretically rated at about 70 million key clicks. That is a lot of clicks. You're not gonna kill this board. You'll probably upgrade before you do. Cherry switches are about 50 million, and Kale are about, at really anyone's guess, it's about 40 million from what I've seen, but we have no way to validate that with Kale. 
So that's, it's sort of Kale, Cherry, and now Romer G in terms of the switch endurance. And it's, it's, there's a lot more to it than switch endurance though. There's also the look and the feel. And in terms of the feel, these feel okay. There, there's no color variation, so it's just Romer G. There's no Romer Blue, Romer Brown, Romer Red, whatever. It's just Romer. That's it. That's, there's only one. So if you don't like it, you're out of luck. Uh, if you like MX Browns, you should try this. See if a local hardware vendor has it that we can try it first. Uh, but give it a shot, and you might like what you feel. If you don't like MX Brown, if you especially don't like damped MX Brown from the 710 Plus, which is another one you can try, then you really you won't like this. It's not going to be loud enough. It's not going to be tactile and clacky enough for you. The Romer G switches do have a shallow actuation depth of only 1.5 millimeters. So if you are doing a lot of typing, this will actually feel kind of good because it doesn't require that much effort to push the keys down. Uh, it's very easy to, to press the keys, but it's that's why it's not as loud. So it's, it's a trade-off there. I like the shallower actuation depth and the quieter noise. You might not. That's okay. In terms of the look, the new switches have a giant hole in the middle for LEDs, and that hole comes with it a lens. There's actually a lens in the hole to amplify the strength of the LED. So it's, the LED sits underneath it, it goes through the glass lens, and then is amplified outward. So you get a much brighter, more vibrant color with the LEDs, as you can see in our shots of the keyboard in the dark. And that's a lot different from Cherry, where you've got more plastic flanking the LED, uh, and sometimes the LED gets in the way of the switch, so they have to engineer a new way to push down the switches without really violating the LED's space. As you can see in our Corsair RGB keyboard unveil we did at CES, either this year or last year, that sort of shows that technology as it was being invented. And Logitech has furthered it with Romer G. So Logitech's board overall, I'm a fan of the way the switches feel, but I also like the way MX Brown switches feel when they're damped. If you don't like that feeling, don't buy this, because you won't like it. If you like that feeling and the relative quietness of MX Brown's damped, you'll like this keyboard. In terms of whether you should buy it, it's still a $180 board, so it's really competing with the 170 Corsair RGB board, and that's got similar software. It's got Lua scripting support, things that Logitech also has. Logitech software is much more impressive in my opinion. They really, they have a lot of things going for them with their software, and I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. That doesn't change the fact that it's an expensive keyboard. So you really, at this price point, you're looking between Corsair's RGB and Logitech's new RGB board, this one, because the cheaper ones like Rosewill's uh, 120-ish, $100 keyboard, 120 I think, RGB80, it is an RGB board, but it's TKL. It doesn't have this 10 key over here, it doesn't have the media panel, it doesn't have any of the other fancy features, and the software is pretty bad. So that's what the extra money gets you for Corsair and Logitech in this situation. Logitech, you're spending a bit extra money for other features, definitely spending a bit more uh, premium for the Romer G switches, but that's what happens when you buy new technology. Theoretically, the Romer G switches last an extra 20 million clicks or so over Cherry. That's a pretty big deal if you're trying to use this forever. Uh, so it might be an okay investment if you're really able to get that life out of these switches. And Logitech does have a warranty program if not. But still, it's $180. Course it is $170. I wouldn't be a buyer of either of them at those prices. I'd be a buyer at about $150 because I just have a really hard time justifying almost $200 on a keyboard when I know I could spend 100 get a single color LED, which Logitech and Corsair and everyone else makes, and then spend that extra 80-ish dollars on something like an SSD, which will have an, a huge impact on your everyday use case uh, scenarios in your computer. So that's really where it stands. It's how much money do you have to spend for effectively a toy, and this is a fun toy to play with because it's got all these cool switch color options in the in the software. The software is really pretty advanced with scripting and it's it's fun to play with. Just do you want to spend the money? So that's what you have to think about as a buyer. Are you willing to spend an extra $80 for RGB colors and and a new switch? So that is everything for this review of Logitech's G910 Orion Spark RGB keyboard. It is a mechanical keyboard. It has Romer G switches. They feel similar to MX Brown damped switches. If you don't like those, you won't like the keyboard. It has RGB colors that is really what you're paying for, and that's all you need to know. 180-ish bucks. Check the link in the description below for full details, a link to the product, and all of that, and I will see you all next time. Peace.